How's it going everyone? This is Mr. JZM and in this video I want to give you all five tips that I think will help you to improve your high rounds in zombies. This tutorial is primarily meant for people that are getting to round 20 to 30 every single game but are having trouble pushing past that and hopefully with this tutorial you'll be able to push much further to 50, even 100 or sometimes even 200 and beyond depending on how well you take this advice. These are all of the tips and tricks that I use in order to push my really high rounds and my world records, as you've seen on this channel. And the reason why I'm making this is because this is probably one of the most common questions that I see asked in the zombies community, how to get better at high rounds. And uh, the community likes to give a lot of different advice, but I generally believe that most of the advice that they give isn't very accurate. So I wanted to give you my expert advice from someone who has been to very high rounds. So the first step that I'd like to go over is forget what you know. Now what does that mean, forget what you know? I'm not telling you to forget everything you know about playing high rounds, but some of the strategies that are probably the most popular strategies are usually not good strategies to help you get to high rounds. The most common answer when asked about how to get to high rounds is usually to learn how to train. But in all reality, training is not going to help you on most maps. There are lots of maps where training in certain areas is really going to put you at a disadvantage, even if it's the most popular strategy. And what you should be doing instead is trying to find what is the best strategy, even if it's not the most popular. To clarify further, here's a list of a number of strategies that are considered to be the most popular strategies that are not the best strategy. Meaning if you run these strategies on these maps, you should strongly consider switching to a different strategy. This list includes camping on top of the stairs on Nocturne and Toten, camping on the catwalk on Doris or the Giant, training on the stage on Keenode or Toten, training by Flopper or Widow's Wine on Ascension, training in the Biodome on Moon, training by Jug on Town, Camping on the roof on Die Rise. Training on the stage or inside the Apothecon on Revelations. Sitting and camping in the side of Spawn on Revelations. Training in the beach or any of the other open areas on Tagder Toten. Or training anywhere, including by the plane or in the spawn room, on D Machine. D Machine has some exceptions, and we'll talk about that. Of course, this is not a complete list, and there are lots of popular strategies that are not good strategies, and I highly recommend in these cases that you switch. And as a matter of fact, the same thing could be said about perks and guns in certain cases. Widow's Wine is very much a crutch perk on the BO3 maps, but sometimes it's not the most beneficial thing for you to be using all of the time. Same thing goes for certain weapons. I know how much we love the HK-21 or the RPK on Black Ops 1, the Hammer or RPD on Black Ops 2, the Dingo or BRM on Black Ops 3, but just because a weapon is popular does not mean it is the best weapon to use. Now going along with this, this might come as a surprise to you, but the ray gun is not good after round 40, except on Cold War. We don't talk about Cold War. Now you might be asking, well, what strategies am I supposed to run then if I'm not supposed to run those strategies? I plan on making more videos for each map on the most popular strategy and what strategy you should run instead. However, for this tutorial, I don't know what map you're going to be playing. So this is the advice I'm going to give. Step two is pick your map and do your research. The easiest way to know what strategy you should be running on a given map is to look at the world record holders and copy the strategies that they use. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would I copy their strategies? The strategies they run are much more difficult and that's why they get the world records. I want you to trust me on this one because it sounds very counterintuitive and it sounds like it's difficult to try and copy a world record holder strategy. But usually when we go for world records, we are playing the easiest strategy, not the most difficult. There are some exceptions, but 
in general, if you want to increase your PB, you should be copying whatever the world record holders are doing. Now maybe there are some exceptions to that, but it doesn't just have to be the high round world record. Sometimes if you're looking to go to round 100, you might want to use whatever strategy the 100 speedrun world record holder is using. Because again, even though they are playing fast, you can generally copy what they're doing and it's going to be much easier than the most popular strategy on the map. To give you one example, let's say I was trying to learn how to play the map Mauard or Toten. I might go to any of my favorite leaderboard sites and find a video of someone who has gotten to round 935 on Mauard or Toten. I could click through a number of their videos and kind of see the strategy that they're running and I might choose to copy the exact strategy that they did. Sometimes the world record holders are really nice and will actually make tutorials on how to do the strategy that they did. Depends on the map, but either way, just watching the full gameplay and kind of studying the movements that they take and what strategy they're using will help you a lot to learn a specific map. So if I was to learn a map like Mauard or Toten, I might click on this guy's video and see that he has included an entire tutorial on exactly what he did to get his 935. And he has linked the full gameplay in the description, so I have about 60 hours worth of gameplay to watch and study. Maybe I want to learn a different map, like Buried. Again, I'm going to go to the Buried World Record leaderboards, find this person, who has round 233, and click on his video. And obviously sometimes the videos are just montages and they don't have a lot of gameplay or a tutorial, but I might be able to look in the description and find the full gameplay and copy what they do. In this case for Buried, I go to my friend Wonderful's channel and I'll click and the first thing I see is a tutorial on how to play Buried, which he just recently made. Excellent. I can watch that tutorial and I'm going to copy exactly what he did. He knows the map best because he's the world record holder. Like I said, it might feel really weird to be copying their strategies when you're not trying to go for a world record. But trust me when I say they know how to do it best and they know how to do it easiest. And if you copy their strategies, you will have just as easy of a time. And another important thing that I want to emphasize is you need to do your research for every single map that you play. Like I said, learning a blanket strategy like training is not going to help you on a lot of maps. You might know how to train on a certain map like town, but then you go play Tagged or Toten and training is only going to hurt you. Same thing goes for training on town versus training in the spawn room on Ascension or something like that. There's specific ways to train, and it's not just running in circles and hoping for the best that's going to help you push your PBs. So every single map is different. So once you have picked the map that you want to play, and you have done your research and you feel confident, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to keep restarting and keep trying. Now what that means is, let's say you're early into your game and you take a silly down that you probably could have prevented. Don't restart your game immediately. Yes, you will be at a disadvantage, but continue to play on and see how well you do. And learn from that mistake. Whatever mistake you did make, try to avoid doing that again. Look back at footage if you have footage and just think back of what went wrong and how can I fix it for the next time. The more you look at your mistakes and take time to kind of understand what you did that went wrong, the easier it will be for you to fix those mistakes going forward. For people who are really good in the high round community, you'll notice there's a trend where people will restart immediately as soon as they get their first down if it's way too early. If you are just getting new at getting to high rounds, you don't have to restart and you don't have to play flawless. On the other hand, however, it does help to know when it is beneficial to restart. Some examples of when it might be good to restart are when you need to get perfect box or perfect drops. And by perfect box, I mean if you're a new player, you might be chasing the box around the map until you eventually get a thunder gun on round 30. But wouldn't it be so much easier if you got the fun thunder gun on your first hit? Consider restarting so that you get that thunder gun or wave gun or wonder weapon on your first couple box hits. That way you have it earlier in the game and you'll be able to survive the early rounds much easier. 
And the same could be true for anything in the game that might be bad RNG. Like if you hit the Wonder Fizz too many times and you just can't seem to get the perk that you want and it's taking way too long, or something like that. Don't be afraid to restart to give yourself better odds in the early game. But in general, learning how to high round and getting good at a specific map is not going to come overnight. Just because you did your research on a certain map doesn't mean you're going to break your PB or even get a world record on your first attempt. It's going to take some time and some practice. And be prepared to keep restarting over and over and over again until you push your PB by another two rounds or another three rounds or another five rounds. Until you get your first round 50, your first round 70, your first round 100. Keep restarting. It takes practice and practice makes perfect. The next piece of advice I wanted to give is learn how to take breaks. The most common complaint I hear from people who have trouble getting to high rounds is they get bored. It's totally okay to get bored, and most high rounders will. Not everyone is going to enjoy every second of the whole game, and it's okay to take breaks. The best way to take breaks when you do get bored is don't just end your game and call it at that try and save your game. So pause it and leave it overnight if you need. If you play on local on PlayStation, rest mode is a great way to help you save your game overnight without running into any issues. And you could theoretically save it for as long as you want. There are similar ways to save your games on Xbox and PC based on what your settings are. And don't feel like you are obligated to have to come back to it the next day or have to play a certain amount of hours in a given day. If you need to take a few days off to kind of build your motivation, take a few days off. Seriously. Remember, my Mowered or Toten game took over two months. And I would only play an hour here, an hour there, take three days off, play an hour in the morning, play an hour at night. I took my sweet time, and it's okay for you to take your sweet time as well. And trust me when I say there is no shame in needing an extra break every once in a while. You don't have to play 10 hours in one sitting like a lot of players tend to do. And the last piece of advice I'd wanted to give was don't be afraid to abuse game mechanics. Now what does that mean? Well, for example, on World at War, you should keep in mind that on Noct, Verucht, and Shinonuma, there are only 24 zombies per round. So don't be afraid to use that to your advantage by keeping the 24 zombies in a place where you can easily kill all of them in one go. Like hoarding all of them up and using a trap or something on Shinonuma or Verucht. For Black Ops 1, typically your biggest advantage in the game is going to be the insta-kill rounds, which happens starting every other round approximately, starting on round 163. When you get to round 163, look up videos on how to properly run insta-kill rounds and how they work, but if you are just getting started in the game, you won't have to worry about that for the most part. But that being said, there are other ways to abuse game mechanics, like glitching or trapping the Cosmonaut on Moon. On Black Ops 3, the biggest piece of advice I can give, especially to new players, is abuse your Mega Gobblegums. First of all, get enough Mega Gobblegums so that you can kind of do whatever you want. I highly recommend going on YouTube and looking up the Spanish Strat for Liquid Divinium. Just type in Spanish Strat Liquid Divinium and click on the first video. You'll see what I mean. I have over 95,000 Liquid Divinium and over 400, if not more, of all of my Gobblegums. I'm never going to run out. And because of that, when I do play games with Mega Gobblegums, I can abuse all of my gums. And I literally mean spam them. Most of the gums, with a couple exceptions, are legal to be used. So if you use things like raindrops and cashback and alchemical, you could just spam your wonder weapon on a lot of maps all the way until you run out of ammo which will probably take over 100 rounds, if not more. On a map like Revelations, you can spam gobblegums that give you ammo for 255 rounds. Take it from experience. Now I understand some of you might be hesitant to want to spam Mega Gobblegums as it might feel a bit impure, but if you're trying to push your records, you should use every advantage that the game gives you. The same could be said on Black Ops 4 about using specific perks. Dying Wish should be in your perk setup every single game. 
Dying Wish gives you way more downs than you normally would have, and learn how to abuse that. In my Tagder Toten world record, I used Dying Wish 16 times, and there's no shame in that. There's no shame in taking way too many downs. The same could be said for abusing silver bullets on Dead of the Night, or using certain strategies that other people consider banned on Alpha Omega. And again, I understand that certain leaderboard sites are not going to like it if you use certain Alpha Omega strategies, but if you're trying to just do something easy and your only goal is to just push your own record, if you think it's illegal, do it. Who cares? You can brag to your friends that don't play zombies and say, look, I got round 100 on this. And trust me, I think it should be legal. So I'll praise you in my heart. I have another video coming on that topic, don't worry. For Cold War, the best thing that you can abuse is the fact that once you have all of your perks upgraded, you are basically invincible. So if you really feel cheesy, use super easy strategies like running the RC car on all the maps. And trust me, you can just spam RC car all the way to around 935 on most maps. Is it going to be a little bit more boring if you play the easy strategies on certain maps? Yes, it's inevitable, but a lot of times it's going to be faster depending on the strategy. And if you're looking to push your PB, again, don't you want to play the best strategy? Don't be afraid to take breaks, like I said in the previous step. And the last thing that you may want to consider abusing if you do play on PC is patches for Black Ops 1, 2, and 3. Patches are very easy to find, and they'll typically give you minor advantages, like guaranteeing that you get wonder weapons on your first hit of the box. Usually it won't change anything else about the game, but setting up is a lot easier if you know you have a thunder gun on your first hit. There are also patches that can guarantee that you get a full bank or a good weapon in your weapon locker every single time you load up a map with a bank or weapon locker on Black Ops 2. Going back to talking about gobblegums, there are also patches that give you unlimited mega gobblegums, even on local. And on local, you don't have to be connected to the internet, and your gums will never run out. So an even better way to spam it without feeling like you're cheating Treyarch out of money or something. Anyway, for now, this is all the advice I have to give. This video is going to be uploaded a lot sooner, but there's another big part that I'm going to be adding to this video. Stay tuned for part two, where I'm going to explain how I take a map that I have never played before, use all of my own advice of researching strategies and taking breaks to get a very high round very quickly. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And make sure to ring that bell so that you know exactly when this next part comes out, which should be within a couple days. Besides that, be sure to follow my Twitch so you can see all of my games live in real time and kind of hear my thought process and how I do everything. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there. And peace.